Howdy, howdy, Chris here. Today I'll be painting this project with the Awada Kiwami 4. From sealer to clear coat, I'll walk you through step by step the entire painting process, giving you all the information you need to do a repair like this at home. This is where we started on this Honda CRV, a dent in the left quarter panel, and some damage on the rear bumper cover. After we repaired those, we are ready to paint. If you want to see how we repaired this CRV, check out next week's episode. This vehicle has already been prepared for paint. A quick rundown of how we did that is we went ahead and we sanded the primer area with 320 grit sandpaper and then the surrounding area where we're blending the base color and the clear coat, we use 600 grit sandpaper or a soft foam 600 grit pad. The Iwata Kwame 4 that I'm using today has a 1.3 tip. I find this is perfect for base coat and clear coat. It does consume about 10 to 13 CFMs of air. So while this is on this lower end of the air consumption of most conventional guns, you will need a compressor that's going to produce around 13 CFMs of air if you're going to paint an entire vehicle. The CRV is all masked off now. We'll always remove as many components as we can before we paint. We remove the tail light. The only thing we did not remove is that quarter panel glass because it's encapsulated glass and they have a tendency to break when they're coming out. So for this repair, we did not remove that glass. Now we are painting the bumper as well. This is a pre-primed aftermarket bumper. We sanded this and prepped this out with 600 grit sandpaper. We are going to seal this before we go ahead and apply our base. The next step is to clean the surface before we start applying our paint. For that, I'm going to use a microfiber towel, and I'm using 70% isopropyl alcohol. We've cleaned this several times before, but you can never clean enough. You want to make sure you have a nice, clean surface before you start applying your paint. I want to make sure we remove any oils or contaminants, anything that's going to limit the adhesion of the paint in the clear coat. It's a good idea to wear gloves during this step because oils from your hand can affect your paint and your clear coat. I'll also clean the bumper with isopropyl alcohol. You don't have to use isopropyl alcohol. You can use soap and water or a wax and grease remover. Now, because this bumper is plastic, I am going to use an adhesion promoter like this. Now, I use Bulldog. There's a several different kinds you can use, and I'll leave links to all the tools and products I use. If you have any questions or want to purchase any of these products down in the description. Now, the main purpose of this is there's a lot of little intricate areas to be sanded, and if any of those areas get missed, you could have a peeling problem down the road. So this is just a little bit of added protection to promote adhesion so we don't have any peeling. The next step is to mix up our sealer. The sealer I'm using today is actually a U-pole primer that can be reduced and used as a sealer. So this primer, and I'll leave the link in the description, um, it's a high build primer that mixes up four to one. Now, if you want to use it as a sealer, you mix it up four parts primer, one part activator, and two parts reducer. It also is a direct to metal primer, so it's very versatile. I've been using it for a few months and I really do dig this product. And one added benefit to this is I use the U-Pole Clear Coat as well. And the U-Pole Clear and the U-Pole Primer use the same activator. So they're interchangeable in that way. It's a pretty slick line of products that U-Pole came up with. So I've got the sealer all mixed up in the Owada gun. But on this quarter panel, I wanna go ahead and lay down a wet bed or a clear base coat. A clear base coat has no pigment in it. It's just binder and reducer. And what this is going to do is it's going to lay down a nice wet bed for those metallics to lay in. It helps those metallics lay flat and uniform. So we have a nice transition and metallic orientation. So we're going to spray it over the entire quarter panel. And then pretty quickly after we lay down the wet bed, we'll put our base right over top of it, allow those metallics to lay flat in that wet bed and create a nice uniform finish. Now I have a very small area to blend this color, so I'm going in one direction away from that door just for the first coat. We wanna keep as little paint as possible right up against that door. Before we go ahead and apply the rest of the base, we're gonna go ahead and seal this rear bumper cover. Now in between sealer, base, and clear, you wanna clean your gun. Make sure it's clean before you move on to the next step. So we went ahead, we applied our adhesion promoter, and now we're just putting a coat of sealer over this bumper cover. To cooler your temperatures, I like to start off my sealer a medium wet coat. You don't want to put it on really heavy. Especially in colder temperatures, you can have a fisheye reaction with sealer. With sealer, you spray it on just like base coat. 
you want to overlap about 80%. I have my fan pattern wide open on this gun and I have my volume or my fluid knob turned to two and a half to three turns out from closed. Typically, I like to spray about six to eight inches away from the panel. That gives the best atomization of the paint or the sealer or the clear coat. The finer the product atomizes as it hits the panel, the flatter the finish. That includes sealer, base coat, clear coat. So if you have your gun too close to the panel, you're not allowing that product to atomize when it hits the panel. You're going to have bigger droplets and more texture in your finish. This is one thing that will cause orange peel. Let's go ahead and mix up the paint. The paint I'm using today is the Nason XL. This was pre-mixed by O'Reilly's. Um, I find that it has a very good color match, very blendable, and it's reasonably priced. This paint mixes up two to one, so I'll find the two to one ratio at the bottom of the mixing cup, and then I'll put my paint in, and then I'll put one part of reducer. Now we're ready to apply our base coat to the bumper and the rest of the quarter panel, but before you do that, you want to make sure you give your sealer an adequate enough time to cure before you apply that base coat. What needs to happen is those solvents need to evaporate out of that sealer before you seal over it with a base coat. If you don't and those chemicals are still evaporating, you're going to cause issues in your paint. It's a little bit cooler in the shop today, about 65 degrees. So we went ahead and waited about 15 minutes for this to flash off before we start applying our base. And then I went around the perimeter of the bumper get all those edges covered, and then we'll paint the entire bumper. A few tips that I found when spraying with this Iwata Kiwami 4 is we all know that it atomizes clear and base coat really well. Iwatas are known for their atomization. But if you're using too much air pressure when you're spraying your base, especially on a high metallic finish, you could get some modeling. And modeling in your base is going to be a blotchiness of those metallics. So you don't need a lot of air pressure when you're spraying your base. I spray this at about 20 PSI, about two turns out on the volume and with my fan pattern wide open. I'll put another coat of base over this quarter panel, making sure that primer is covered. I'm still being careful not to get base out near the edge of that door. So in between coats, you want to let it flash off for 15 minutes. Here, I'm inspecting the panel, making sure there's no dust particles that have landed in my paint. I want to remove those before we start clearing. So here I see a few little dust particles. I'm trying to get those out with a tack rag. If they don't come out, you can take a little piece of fine sandpaper, like 1,000 or 2,000, and scuff those out, and then apply a little bit more base, and you'll be good to go. So we'll tack this off. Look it over with the sunlight and make sure it's clean before we apply one more coat of base and then our clear coat. Looking over the coater panel, I found a particle of dust. I'm going to sand this out with an 800 grit foam pad. And then we'll apply a little bit of paint over there when we do our drop coat and get that covered and we'll be ready for some clear coat. The U-Pole Spot Panel Clear Coat mixes up two to one, so we'll find our two to one ratio at the bottom of the mixing cup. We'll put in two parts of our clear and then one part of our activator. Always make sure to use the right activator for the temperature you're spraying and this makes a big difference in the finished product you're gonna get in your clear coat. Now, today it's a little bit cooler. I am using a standard activator. If you're looking for a reasonably priced clear coat for your project, I would definitely recommend checking out this U-Pole clear coat. It really holds its gloss, it cuts and buffs easy, and it's not difficult to spray at all. After 15 minutes, we'll tack off these panels and then we'll lay down some clear coat and really see what this Kiwami 4 can do. My settings for clear with this Awada Kiwami is 29 PSI on my air pressure. I'm gonna have my fan pattern wide open. I'm gonna overlap 80%. When we're making our passes, we're gonna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. My fluid setting or volume is gonna be three turns out from closed. My first coat will be a thin, wet coat, and then we'll hit it a little bit heavier on our second coat by slowing down just a bit and putting more material on the panel.
I always been a fan of a WADA and I really like how this gun performs. But if you have this gun, I want to hear from you. I want to know what your thoughts are on it. Let me know down in the comments below. After about 15 minutes, we're ready for our second and final coat of clear. I am going to hit it a little bit harder. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to spray at the same speed, but I'm just going to be about an inch closer than I was before. This is going to put more material on the panel, help it to flow out just a little bit better and give us a nice flat finish. Whether it be equipment or materials, I'm always looking for the best value for my money and I relay that information to you, my viewers. And I can't argue with the performance of this Iwata Kiwami 4 at a budget price of around $190, under $200. You're going to get an incredible gun that puts out a beautiful looking finish. You can't argue with how this gun performs. Check out the results of this CRV. We did not cut and buff this. We didn't remove any orange peel, a couple little particles of dust, and it's done. Beautiful looking finish with a great gun. Listen, if you need a paint gun for a small compressor, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.